Hey folks, and welcome to this first video in a series of videos around the Raspberry Pi 5 and some of the latest AI hardware that are available to purchase for it. Uh, the most recent is the new AI camera that has AI processing on board. This is a collaboration between Sony and the Raspberry Pi Foundation to create a facility to, to offload some of the, the AI capabilities onto the camera itself and have it deliver the metadata directly from that model to the Raspberry Pi, releasing some of the processing power of the Pi. Before that, we had the Raspberry Pi AI kit, which came in the form of a hat and used the M2 hat format, where we had um, a pretty powerful AI processor that we could hook into. We'll be looking at both of those elements uh, in the next couple of videos, but this video really actually is just getting started with the Raspberry Pi 5 and we'll, we'll get it all set up ready to accept those devices. So before we start, um, the first thing we really need to do is get an operating system, an OS, onto an SD card. So if we navigate across here, if you uh, go to the Raspberry Pi site and go to software, the Raspberry Pi OS is there ready for us. Now the easiest way to do this is to use the Raspberry Pi OS imager, the Pi imager here. So you can go ahead and download that and get it installed. And then you'll be uh, shown something along these lines. Probably a good idea would be to format your SD card as well. So I've actually got a uh, an SD card here. Uh, so if I stick that into my SD card slot. There we are. So you can run the SD card formatter and just make sure that you've got an empty SD card. So we can do that. There we are, and this is just a 16 gig card for now. So we can close that, and then the next thing we need to do is choose which type of Raspberry Pi device we have. In our case, a Raspberry Pi 5, so we can select that. Then we need to choose our operating system. I'm gonna choose this 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS. This is recommended here for by uh, the uh, Raspberry Pi imager, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then we need to choose the storage device. Be very careful. I've only got one option here, but you will lose the contents of that SD card. So we'll choose that and then we can press next. Would you like to apply any OS customization settings? I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to say no. All existing data on the SD card will be erased. We knew that. So we'll press yes. And then that will prepare to write. So we'll just make sure that that gets started correctly and it looks like it has. I'll just let that get to say 1% before we move away and that's okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is unpack my Raspberry Pi kit. Now I do actually have a case for this as well, uh, but I'm not gonna be using the case in this particular video uh, because we're gonna need access to be able to, to plug in cameras and possibly hats and things like that. So I'm gonna leave that aside. Uh, for the Raspberry Pi, you'll need a spe this specific Raspberry Pi, the 5, you'll need the right power supply. So you can see here that we've got the Raspberry Pi 5 power supply, this 27 watt power supply. Uh, and we'll need an active cooler as well, just so that we can make sure that our Raspberry Pi operates at peak efficiency and doesn't overheat. So let's unpack the power supply first. So our power supply is nicely packaged away in that. Set that aside. And you see, if you've um, used Raspberry Pis before, you'll notice that it's a slightly different looking power supply to the previous kind of more square models. So this one will stick out of the wall a little bit uh, compared to the other one, but likely, you know, that's why it's slightly beefier. So let's undo this tie wrap. And then I'll plug this in over here. And then we're now ready for our Raspberry Pi when we get to it. Next thing we need, of course, is our Raspberry Pi 5. This is the 8 gig model. So you can see that labeled there. You can get a 4 gig and um, possibly a 2 gig, I believe. But the, the, the 8 gig is where we're going to go for anything to do with AI. I think that's sensible. We can open that up here where it says open here. 
used to be of course you'd go on the end and you'd make a mess a mess of your box but we'll do that here so if we open this up there we go and in there we have our nice raspberry pi 5 so i can take that out of there there's a couple of bits uh, of documentation here should we want it so this is how to get started with your Pi 5. So take a look at some bits, read the bits, make sure that you don't touch it because it might get hot and things like that. I'll leave that back in the box and put that to one side as well. So that's our Raspberry Pi 5 um, in all its goodness. So I'll turn that right the right way for you. So um, what's cool about this Raspberry Pi 5 is that it's using its own custom silicon. So this little Raspberry Pi um, labeled chip here is their first uh, custom silicon. I think that's the RP1. Um, so pretty pretty cool stuff. But what it does mean is that there's a whole heap of breaking changes between the Pi 4 and the Pi 5. So worth bearing that one in mind. We're not going to come up against any of that particular stuff here. But um, one of the important things to note is that we've got two... CSI camera slots on here now interestingly so um, we'll be making use of that this is um, for PCIe over here so um, I think if we get to the next video for that we'll see that being used to connect our PCIe um, for the AI hat as part of that AI kit so good so that's all happy uh, we need to install our active cooler onto the top of our Raspberry Pi, so we can go ahead and do that. So I can take that out of the box. And then we'll get a few bits here. So these uh, are the, um, uh, the, the conducting heat pads that are going to line up with our chips here. And then we've also got the active element, the cooler, the fan, and that's going to plug in uh, to the board um down here i think just there probably so um this will be going that way around i imagine and we'll line up with those three chips so uh, that one and then that one and then this down here as well with all of the gubbins around it so um we can be sure because it will actually tell us um uh, to go to the website so products stroke active cooler and you can go ahead and check out how that works but you know if we kind of line this up on here we'll see uh, the general idea about how it's going to connect so here we have a couple of different uh, locations that will get uh, posts through them and then, as I mentioned, the chips that we're going to be cooling are these ones primarily. So the RP1 itself over there. Is that an RP1? Um, I lose track now. That's going to be um, keeping itself pretty cool, so don't need to worry too much about that. But um, we can go ahead and peel this off. And then we'll place these two away, just like everything else. And then these will then line up with those holes down there so only really go in one spot so let's get that lined up correctly so along the lines of that there we go and then we can insert these posts into there there we go and the same for this one There we go, so that's nicely inserted in there now. And that will keep our pie nice and cool. Now, uh, there's a little um, cover over the top of this. It's easy to miss and actually quite difficult to get out once uh, you've got the cooler in place. Whoop, there it goes, it flew off, off into the distance. Um, and we can then get this plugged in here. So let's pop that in the correct way it should only go in one way likely this way i 
that sound that I heard there a second ago, that is telling me that my SD card is ready. There we are. So that's now happily inserted into there. So we have some active cooling going on. So happy enough with that. So that is the Raspberry Pi and its active cooler correctly installed. If we go back a screen, we can see now that the Raspberry Pi OS has been written to our SD card. So we can now remove it from the reader. So we can press continue and close out of that. And then I can remove it from the reader. Here we go. And then uh, that's our SD card and we can insert that into our Raspberry Pi just here. Like so, so that's all happy. So on our Raspberry Pi, we have two 4K HDMI ports that you'd probably be able to see here. And um, I've got a capture card on my machine here, so I should be able to connect that. So over here, I've got one end of the HDMI, and then we can plug this into HDMI 0, which uh, should be this one, I think. We'll soon find out if it doesn't work. There we go. And then here is our power. So this is the USB-C power from our power supply. So we can pop that in as well. Stretch this across a little bit so that it reaches easy enough. There, so I pop this down here. There we go. In fact, probably what we should do is connect up a USB mouse and keyboard. Because again, this is an actual machine, an actual PC. So I'll connect a mouse in here. My Raspberry Pi official mouse. And then likewise, my Raspberry Pi official keyboard. And they're both plugged in now. So we'll be able to control our Raspberry Pi. Um, otherwise, we're going to be a bit stuck. So if we turn this on now, we should get some LEDs. Yep, so we've got an LED down here. And the fans just started up as well, which is good news. Okay, and so we now have our Raspberry Pi booted up. We can run through some of these steps. Uh, we're going to leave the country as it is because uh, we're in the UK, so I'm happy with that. Um, I've already entered uh, a username and a password here, so um, we can leave that as it is. Um, it's warning that I've used the, the standard username and password. That's fine. I've gone ahead and connected the Wi-Fi as well. So we can press next. Um, the uh, Chromium browser, I'm happy enough with that. So we can press next to that. And here we have Raspberry Pi Connect. So this is the brand new and currently still in beta, I think, uh, equivalent to VNC. So because we're now using, um, I think it's Bookworm, the latest version of, uh, of the Linux distro underneath this, it requires a different methodology for connecting where the VNC wouldn't work. So Raspberry Pi have gone and created their own um, remote control uh, application called Raspberry Pi Connect that will allow us to be able to connect to this Raspberry Pi from anywhere we like. So I'm going to turn that on and then press next. And then we need to update our software. So press next to that one and it should download some updates. OK, that's coming along nicely now. So. We're seeing the updates being installed. And our system is now up to date. So we can OK that. And then we need to restart our Pi. And there we have our Raspberry Pi. Uh, booted to the desktop and happy enough. So uh, the usual menu that we can see here. It looks like everything is OK. So yeah, our Raspberry Pi is now happy. So join me in the next video where I'll be looking at the new AI camera, uh, which was just released and we'll have a play with that and see what that can do. So thanks for watching folks and see you soon.